Hello everyone, welcome to Court with Chrissy. I've got an update on our dependent domestic violence victim, along with a teacher who I think is chopping onions at his desk while trying to take a plea. I hope you like it. Court with Chrissy is now in session. And uh, people versus Laird. Okay, I saw Mr. Uh, Atwood here earlier. I don't know if he intended to be here for this or you handling. Okay. Thank you. All right. So that is file 8789 of 2023, People versus Nicholas Laird. And uh, Mr. Laird, are you able CIA to CIA identification number 9738973. Go ahead. All right. Well, you can hear me anyhow. Your attorney, Mr. Johnson, is here in court. Ms. Olson is here for the people. And uh, we did receive... Where's Ms. Olson? Oh, that is, is that Ms. Olson? Ms. Olson is seated at the table next to Mr. Johnson. That oh, okay. is the prosecutor. Ah, okay. I thought, you, so, I thought you said she was with the people. Well, she represents the people of the state of Michigan. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So we did receive some correspondence from the forensic center. Uh, and I believe what it indicated is that. Uh... All right. All right, sir, are you Nicholas Mizgata? Yes, I am, Your Honor. All right. This is a probation. I think they it's requesting the no contact. So that's the old Yes. Oh, I see. All right. All right. On this matter, um, he is on probation. Ms. Hill is here. We've received a request from. Uh, Tina Nizgata, who I, or Tina, Tamika, I, I'm sorry, Tamika Eichenberg, who was the victim in this. Um, and it's dated June 18th, which five days after the sentencing. But she's asking that the no contact order be lifted. There's other things in here as well, but what is of concern to me right now is the um, request to lift the no contact rule or order. Ms. Parker, do you see Ms. Eichenberg? She is here. I sent her a message asking her to maybe put on a sweater or a blanket, but I will ask her to start her video again. I'm, I have a tank top on and I'm at a restaurant right now, so I'm not quite sure what it is you're talking about. Well, I can hear you, ma'am. You don't need to start your video. That's fine. You can just go ahead. Um, you're asking me to lift the no contact order. Um, anything else you wanted to say beyond what's in your letter? Um, yes, Your Honor. Uh, I would like to bring up a couple points. Um, one, Mr. Nisgoda has been my sole care provider for the last three years since my mother died. Um, in the last two weeks, I've been taken to the ER three different times yesterday for a panic attack that was so bad that I thought I was having a stroke. Um, not having contact with him is causing me to just become a complete mess. I have checked in with mental health. I do have an appointment tomorrow with Access to get started with counseling here in Gaylord. And one of the biggest things that I would like to do during the time that he is incarcerated is uh, one, as I told you, get married. I did get the birth certificate in order. And on top of that, I would also like to do couples counseling so that we could maybe, whether it be over the phone or uh, something of that matter, I would like to be able to work together to learn how to deal with uh, our issues together as a couple. Um, that is one of my biggest concerns. And I just am having a really hard time with not being able to speak with him and not being able to talk to him about what's going on. He's been my calm for the last three years. And now that 
he's gone, a lot of my anxiety and panic is just, it's become <laughs> unbearable for me, sir. All right. All right. Um, Ms. Brooker, anything you wanted to say in this matter? Two quick things, Judge. Um, the court ruled on this at sentencing, um, and I don't think anything new has happened since then. Um, Ms. Eichenberg brought um, some of these concerns to the court's attention at that time, and nothing has really changed. I think we're just kind of relitigating this issue again. Second, he's on parole, and there's a no contact in his parole. So regardless yes. of what this court does, he's not going to be able to have contact with her. Yes, so he I would will, ask because... that the court leave yes. that in oh, place. Hold on. Um, I don't think he, I don't think he's done, you know, domestic violence counseling. I'm not sure she's working with the women's center. I think some things have to ha happen before the court in this case should consider lifting it. Justin, his parole officer said that if I were to get the no contact order lifted today, that he would get it lifted through parole. Well, that's not what he's sending me messages saying. So I don't I know. Doubt I doubt it. And I have it in text message to prove it. So do I. Well, so <laughs> Ms. Hill, I guess he is not actually on probation. Well, I'm sorry, he, he had, I did give him a probation term. Um, Ms. Hill, have you, and I know, have you had contact, and I wouldn't expect you to have, but have you had contact with Mr. Brunekel on no. this case? Um, I'm going to take this under advisement. I'll hear what you have to say um, in a minute, Mr. Nizgata, but Ms. Hill, I'd like you to um, contact uh, Mr. Brunekel and see you know, what his position is on the no contact. So it helps me to know that we have one and he has one and um, just what his position is as to what he's going to do. Okay, um, Amanda, can you send me his contact information? I can. Thank you. All right, Mr. Brown, and I don't know if you're still technically on this case, did you have any comments? Hi, Your Honor, I don't think I've ever been on this case, so. I really oh, don't know what's going on with it. It was Mr. Trusha's case. That's right. Okay. Sorry. Mr. Nizgata, anything you wanted to say? Yes, Your Honor. Um, you know, due to the fact that I'm incarcerated um, and everything here is, and I'm going to be incarcerated for a little while at least, at bare minimum, you know, I think that I've talked with Justin last week and we were talking about possibly just being allowed to where I could have um, phone calls and visits that way everything's still monitored and everything is you know goes according to and is almost supervised and he had, he did inform me that asked me what if I would like to continue to talk with uh Tamika and he did he also told me that if it, it has to be addressed in the court prior to him addressing it as a parole stipulation and he would talk to his supervisor because if he was going, if it gets lifted or even allows us to have phone calls and visits where it's supervised, then he would be able to get it lifted, but it has to go through the court first. But I, I you know, that's the, at least that that's my point is, is I just at least ask for that because yes, we have problems and things that we need to work on, but there's only so much that's offered while we're here. And, and just as much as I'm her support system, she is mine. You know, I don't have anybody or anything either. So it's it's kind of hard to deal with a whole household of everything that's in, you know, all the bills and everything are in my name, but I can't have no contact or nothing to do with anything. And it, it you know, it makes it hard. And I understand I put myself in that position. But all I do is, is could I have phone calls? You know what I'm saying? Could we well, have something that here's 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 the situation. There's two courts. There's myself in this matter. And then there's the circuit court and they, they make their decisions independently. I'm going to speak to Mr. Brunekel, or actually Ms. Hill right. is, and she'll let me know, but I'll probably then give okay. him a call. And I suspect we'll try to do the same thing, but I want his input. He will know you better Absolutely. than I. So yep. and I, will, I may set it for another hearing. I may just rule on it. Um, okay. But but I'll, I need to get that information and I'll speak to him directly. So Ms. Hill, yes, once you get, once you have spoken to him, if you give me a brief summary and I'll give him a call. Got it. Okay, thank you. It does conclude thank what you we are. can do in this case for today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Thanks. Your Honor. <laughs>
So. Samir, I'm at least on behalf of the people, Your Honor. Maria Chupak, appearing on behalf of guys who is present and consenting to Zoom for purposes of pretrial today. And in the meantime, while I'm taking this plea, um, Ms. Uh, Malus, if you could send, I think you have the Neville's file, if you could send that back um, and we could deal with that. All right, so um, Mr. Chives, can you state your name, please? Michael Chives. All right, today's date and time set for pretrial, Ms. Chupak. Yes, Judge, at this time, he's going to be pleading guilty as charged. Okay. All right, Mr. Chives, please raise your right hand. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes, sir. All right, please put your hand down. Um, Mr. Chives, can you uh, read, write, and understand the English language? Yes, sir. Can you hear and understand me? Yes. Have you had a full chance to discuss this with your attorney? Yeah. And are you satisfied with your attorney's advice? No, but it is what it is. Yeah. No, nope, no, nope, that's we're not we're not doing that. So yeah, if if you are not comfortable with that advice, um, then no one we're, we're not in the business of force and please here. Um, and if you're not comfortable today, Mr. Chives, and you need some more time to reflect on this or consider your options, that's fine. I I I do. I do this every week. I do this every day of the week. So if 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 it takes an, uh, another week for you to evaluate, another two weeks, I, I would much rather have a situation where you, although certainly unhappy, feel more comfortable that your course of action is the best one. So so when I hear a you know not not satisfied, that's that I'm not going to go forward on that. Okay, it's not. And again, I'm not mad about it. I'm just not going to go forward on it. I don't even, I'll be honest with you. I don't even know what to do. I'm about to lose my job, so I don't even matter. I'm a whole teacher, and I recognize my mistakes of what I did. So, like I said, this is I'm dead. It don't even matter. So, like I said, I'm guilty of whatever I'm going through. So that's why I said it is what it is because at the end of the day, yes, I'm upset, and I'm I'm, I'm extremely upset that I'm going through this. And I'm a product of this community. I'm a teacher and all that stuff. It's like, now my life is about to be over now because of a simple mistake that I made. So I, I mean, forgive me. I'm just very upset at myself right now. And, and that's, so So here, I guess here's my, my question. Have you, so do you know for certain that you will lose your job for this? Yes. Okay, so you've talked to your employer about this? I just know that DPSCD is a non-tolerant, it's a non-tolerant, district and then on top of that the reason why i've been going to atlanta is because i'm trying to get a job out there in atlanta be a teacher out there and okay. i know they're going to run my background check and i know they're going to see this and then know it's going to be I, I won't be able to teach so that's what I'm, that's that's what i'm saying my my career is over i'm, I, I'm done here so like I, said, I don't i don't okay so mr chives how long have you been a teacher six years six years okay so um I, I can't believe that um, you would be the first teacher to ever have an, an alcohol related situation. OK, I'm sure that this has happened before the, the, the what I'm hearing a little bit right now are assumptions that you're making about how they're going to react because of maybe what you've heard other people have gone through. So you're you have a union, right? Yeah, but I'm not a part of that union. Okay. All right. So that, I mean, that's, well, whether you're part of the union or not, they probably have collectively bargained um, for uh, a, a, basically a way in which people are, um, are dealt with if they have, for example, an alcohol or drug issue or something like that. All right. So that's why I'm a little concerned about assumptions being made because I've seen many an employer, including school districts, where a person comes forward and says, hey, um, this happened. I've discovered I have this issue. I am doing this to take care of it. I'm willing to, um, you know, go on performance plans, you know, get, get you whatever information about what I am doing on probation. I mean, I've seen doctors keep their job. I've seen nurses keep their jobs. I've seen many people keep their jobs because they sort of put it out up front and they say, hey, I'm going through this. I have this, what's going on. 
you know, what, what, what would happen if I was placed on probation? What would happen? Because the thing is, is that if you have the conversation now, you haven't been convicted yet. All right. So if you have the conversation now, you can have an idea. All right. Well, then, you know, the, the, the penalties are too severe. So I just have to roll the dice, and try a trial. OK. Or you find out that, hey, OK, well, they're not happy about it. They put me on probation. Maybe they there's a even some type of suspension or something. Who knows? We don't even know what the consequence would be. So, Mr. Chives, before before you you know surrender to this idea that your life is over well I, I i would i would just simply say i've seen too many people who have owned their poor choice you know just let's be careful here again i uh, you know you remain presumed innocent and all that but if this happened you know we do have to be careful with the words that we choose because if it happened as it's described this this was a series of choices and we all own our choices my goodness if you're in education you know Mr. Chise, and you probably have really worked to instill that in your students. Hey, we own our choices. We learn from them and we make better ones. Okay. Um, and guess what? When people make poor choices under your watch, you work with them. All right. So why couldn't we expect the same standard to be applied to you? You know, you make a poor choice and it's not like you just got the job 30 seconds ago. You've been on the job for six years, right? Right. So um, it, I think this, it, the scariest thing is the unknown. All right. What what if they flat out what if they flat out reject me? OK, well, if that's the case, that's what you thought was going to happen anyway. So we just deal with it. OK, but I, I, I'm sorry. There are too many. I've had too many people on probation who are teachers uh, to, you know, to to know that there's not an automatic lose your job. And maybe there is in that district. Then you find another district. All right. Um, because if you got six years under the belt, that means you got six years of students that you worked with. You got six years of parents that you dealt with. You got six years of people who would come forward and say you do a good job. So, Mr. Chives, I'm not going to take a plea today because you have some homework that you still have to do. OK, so I, I, I would say let's get out of the world of assumptions and get some facts. Let's get some facts. All right. And make sure you know for sure. OK, what will the consequence be? I have a math question. I just want to know if it's fictional or a fact. And then you can make some decisions from there. I'm going to let you keep going to Atlanta and all that. But, um, you know, I, I do think it's a good idea if, you know, if the likelihood that this is going to be a, a, a plea of some sort um, or there's going to be some type of conviction, it doesn't do you any good. To hold it back from whoever your you know your future potential employers are going to be, you know I mean they're like you said they're going to find out anyway, so you know it's I've I've had I've seen it too much Mr. Chives where I've had people who have assumed the worst about an employer, I mean we've come a long way with with jobs they understand that their employees a lot of places understand their employees are people, and if they're good hard workers and if they make a poor choice but they're willing to make a change. Well, you don't want to lose a good hard worker. Hard to find these days. So, Mr. Chives, just like any other successful endeavor that you have gone about in your life, all right, because you have had to make plans, you've had to work hard to become a, 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 someone in education for six years, okay? It's not like you just pulled a lottery ticket. You had to work to get there. You had to plan to get there. You had to fight to get there. And during that process, you engaged in information gathering. Well, just go... Do that again. Gather information. Get yourself in the best possible position to make the best possible decision in a very difficult situation. All right? And that will make the scary unknown manageable. All right? The, the, what I see right now, you're just, you're just, the, the weight of this combined with the weight of the unknown is making it so that you can't feel at least comfortable and confident with a, with a path of, with whatever path you're going to choose. So go out there and get the information that you need. Frankly, the information that you deserve. So I'm going to bump this out a couple of weeks. Is that fair, Mr. Chives? Can you can you do that? I just need to know what you want me to do, to be honest with you. I'm be honest. Uh, well, I, I, I can't. So, Mr. Chives, as the judge, I can't tell you one way or the other what decision you're going to make, okay? That would look kind of bad if a judge just said, hey, you need to plead to this. You know, that, that's... That's not a good thing, okay? 
All I'm just trying to do is provide you some additional information because you haven't been in the criminal justice system, some additional information that I know from what I've seen and the way that I've seen teachers be handled by their districts in other cases, that it might not be the end of the world uh, when it comes to your employment. Um, but at the same point in time, we can't get any answers until you start asking the questions and finding out. Ms. Chupak, if I'm overstepping at all, please cut me off. But I, I just I want to make sure Mr. Chives feels you know we're going to feel good. Nobody nobody feels good about pleading guilty. Okay, no, nobody feels good about that. You're never going to feel good. But the hope is that you at least feel informed. All right, and and as ready as you can be. And I'm, I don't, I'm ready. I'm just upset, sir. That's that's it. I'm upset about this whole situation. That's really about it. So, like, so I'm if I, I'll go ahead with the plea. I'm I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I mean, Miss Miss Chupac, I, I don't. Again, where we're at right now, I don't know that I feel comfortable with that. Judge, I, I did express that same sentiment to him when we were in the breakout room. I wasn't fully comfortable either, but I ultimately it's court's decision and also yeah. their time. Listen, I'll, I'm going to bump this another week. And just, just to make sure on my end, because when I hear terms like, you know, I'll, I'll go along with it things like that that that's something um i don't i don't feel comfortable with judge i wasn't saying go along with it i'm just saying like i've never been in this situation before ever uh, i this if y'all look at my record my record's been it's clean i've never got in trouble so it's like this being in a situation like this is very different from me so right. I, I just hope you guys have just understand that yes i'm upset right now because i've never been in this type of situation before right. and so, like so, I so, Mr. Chimes, and if you so, that's why I'm trying to get, let you know, like from my perspective, when I have somebody who's never been through the system before, all right, and they ha show any sort of reservation, like like Mr. Chimes, whatever I do can be evaluated as well. And so, one of the things that uh, judges are evaluated on is at the time that someone takes a plea, um, is there any sign that a person is um, you know, that they're feeling like they, they're, they're forced to do it or that they are, um, they're not ready to understand the consequences. Uh, they haven't been fully informed. They haven't fully considered their options. And if I see some of those signs and I go ahead with the plea, well, later on, like, you know, a couple months down the line, you could say, you know what, I, I, I wasn't in a good place. I want to set aside my plea. And, and then, and then it basically, it's 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 on me because I didn't hit the pause button. Like I should have hit the pause button because all these signs that you're showing me right now says this guy's not ready to enter a plea. It doesn't mean that you are not ready um, as far as accepting responsibility or that you're fighting or anything like that. But you are not in a place right now where I feel comfortable accepting a plea. That's that's where I'm at. Okay, that is not a criticism. That's just, uh, hey, we can't do this right now. It doesn't mean that you're you're trying to avoid responsibility. Far from it. You've been on track with your bond. I let you leave the state. You've come back without issue. You've done everything you, that I've asked you to do. I know you're a responsible person, but you could be a responsible person that isn't quite ready to 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 enter that plea. And that's where I think we're at right now. So um, I'm just gonna I'm gonna bump this a week, but I want you to talk with Miss Chupac. Um, I'll set this first thing in the morning um, so we can try to get you in and out. Uh, Ms. Chupac, we're going to bump your other one anyway, I'm sure. Mr. Neville's. Uh, it was his first pretrial. Yes. Okay. So failed to appear, but um, you got to come back anyway. Yeah. So let's try, actually, let's do it. Let's do it two weeks. Um, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to be at CDAM, but. If we could do next week, it'd be better. But if two weeks, that's fine too. No, we could try next week then. I'm fine with that. So let's do this. Eight forty-six a.m. Um, we won't need to. And, and I appreciate you being here this morning too, Mr. Chives, and being patient this morning, like you've been. 
Um, let's try to keep this nice and uh, tight for him next week. So I'll be ready to go at 846. Um, and then we can come in. There won't really be any need for any further discussions. We know where the people stand. Uh, we know what the situation is. And uh, we're either going to take a plea or we're not. Uh, and um, and then we can always set up a trial if we have to. Uh, and for Mr. Nevels, I would just encourage you to try to continue to get a hold of him. He's failed to appear today. Next time will be a bench warrant. Does the court have a phone number? I was not given one, and I did mail a letter to him, but I haven't had I haven't had any contact. Monica, we got this file, and uh, when we're done, we try to find out. It doesn't look like there was a phone number that was obtained. Okay. Um, it should have been obtained at the time of the arraignment. So maybe talk with Tammy or Paulina. Uh, making sure that that's reinforced that we get that information. Uh, all we have is the address that was given uh, by Mr. Nevels. So uh, okay. we'll try to send notice again. Okay. What, um, just out of curiosity, Mr. Chad, what, um, what subject do you teach? I'm fifth grade English and social studies teach. Great. Okay. Uh, I have a, um, we have a, a program in our court called Justice 101, where we work with all the fifth graders in our community. So, Mr. Chives, that is a great age group to be able to work with. So, I can see just how and why this is so important to you. Um, but uh, just continue to stay on track with what you can control, and that is, you know, your, you know, your, your efforts, your honesty. Um, and uh, I, I, I think, I still think that there's a, a road for you to continue to be able to do what your calling is. Um, but like I said, try to try to figure out as much information you can. We'll see you back here in a week, and um, and then we can move forward with whatever we're going to do at that time. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good luck, Mr. Chives. See you in a week. Bye. Thank you.